Hello, warm welcome to you all as we gather together for worship on this Sunday, August 11th, 2024. Just a few announcements for you today. Don't forget that St. Peter's Apparel Sale is happening to benefit our youth fund. Uh, you can buy online. You can see the link on our church website. Those orders are due by tomorrow, uh, by Monday the 12th. So that is the latest that, that we can take orders so that we can have them out by the end of the month. So if you were interested in ordering any apparel, please get those orders in as quickly as possible. Don't forget about our annual clam dinner at Blue Valley Farm Show coming up this Thursday, the 15th, uh, starting at 5 p.m. Um, and that benefits our youth as well as our scholarship committees. So please consider coming out on Thursday to support both those groups. On September 15th, we'll be having our annual Rally Day picnic under the tent outside. On that day, we'll also have a hymn sing. So we're asking members of the congregation to submit their suggestions for their favorite hymns to be included in the service that day. Uh, if you would like to be able to submit a hymn, you can send an email to the church and we'll be sure to include that. And it's also that time of year to order your mums for our upcoming Harvest Home celebration in September. And you can see more information about that in the church newsletter. And now let us take a moment and prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to some beautiful prelude music.
We begin our worship this day with our opening confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The immeasurable grace of Christ Jesus, the rich mercy of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Our first lesson is a reading from the book of 1 Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join with me in reading responsibly from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Our second lesson is a reading from the book of Ephesians. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God and Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today I want to take some time to tell you about the incredible experience that I had along with 
two of our young people and our other adult chaperone as we went down to the ELCA youth gathering a few weeks ago. But first, I want to show you a video that encapsulates the week. You can make a change. You can be disruptive. The strong you, the awkward you, the everything you is so deeply and wildly loved. see all scars as beauty because a scar does not form on the dying. A scar means I survived. <laughs> I had to try out different coping mechanisms and medications and struggle to find the balance that was meant to fit this body. I had to reset my relationships with food and with family. The struggle was real. The struggle is real still. But I was created to be free from the burden of being someone else. anything like me, you might be afraid that your light is a little bit too bright, too different, too much, too hot, too cold, too fierce, too whatever. And in some ways, you might be right. Because this world is rarely prepared for love's arrival. I grew up in Bethlehem Lutheran Church, right around the corner from where we're working right now in Central City, New Orleans. Um, so having the Lutheran gathering here was really full circle moment for me. Being able to connect with the youth and show them uh, how the spirit and my faith has led me into this profession and how that connects to agriculture was very important and very fulfilling. When I was in a place that I wasn't sure I could continue living, I was doing a lot of talking to God. And I wasn't asking God to change me. I already knew how to morph into all these different versions of myself. I was asking God to be with me, to rescue me from my despair. In college, I finally began to realize that it was better to be myself than to be who other people wanted me to be. Think about the Jesus who calls us 
to challenge systems of oppression and power. Each day we were at the gathering, we had the opportunity to interact with 16,000 other young people and their chaperones, as well as leaders and volunteers who helped to make the event possible. And each day was a unique experience where we learned about God and our relationship with God and with one another. Each day had a theme that went along with the overall theme of the gathering, which was created to be. We learned that we were created to be brave, authentic, free, disruptive disciples. And we also learned that we are known, seen, loved, and called by the creator of the universe. Through music and speakers, each evening at the mass gathering, where we joined together in the Smoothie King Center, we heard of the love of God for all people and how we are a part of that love and how we are invited to welcome others to know that love. We heard stories of incredible tragedy, stories of strength, stories of learning and growing, stories of hope, and stories that reminded us of the struggles that we all face as a part of everyone's story. On our accompaniment day, we had the opportunity to go out into the Lower Garden District, a group of 50 of us, to work in a local neighborhood cleaning out storm drains and shoveling sediment from the roads so that the rainwaters would drain properly. It's not glamorous work, but we did it with smiles on our faces and joy in our hearts. But it struck me as a perfect example of what one of the speakers in the video said. You might be afraid that your light is a little bit too bright, and in some ways you might be right, because this world is rarely prepared for love's arrival. We showed up, this busload of 50 volunteers ready to work. The local coordinator we were to be working with knew that we were coming. But when we arrived, there were only 17 shovels. So we ended up working in teams of three people, one shoveling, one holding the garbage bag to put in the sediment, and one offering moral support, or taking a water break, as the case may be. And we ran out of bags long before the time when we were supposed to be working till. The coordinator couldn't believe that all of these young people and their adult chaperones worked so hard and that we were even there to begin with. As we worked, People driving in their cars, locals from the neighborhood, stopped, rolled down their windows, and thanked us for what we were doing. This world is rarely prepared for love's arrival, especially when that love shows up, not just in words, but in actions, doing the dirty work of caring for others. If we learned anything in New Orleans, it's that this love is sorely needed in our world. And being in God's love, we are called to share that love with the whole world. Amen. And now let us join together in confessing our faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Reignite the prayer of the church. By your spirit, root your church around the globe in prayer and spiritual practices. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We rely on the goodness of your creation in everything we do. We pray for trees that offer shade and for our fellow creatures that depend on the trees for shelter and food. Sustain the work of all who advocate for forest and wilderness areas. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Guide our leaders and nations with a spirit of justice and mercy. Let no evil come out of our mouths, but rather let us extend grace. We pray for our enemies. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sustain feeding ministries and organizations such as ELCA World Hunger and our local food pantries. We work and pray for a day when hunger is no more. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for this congregation and for all who are gathered. Be present among anyone who cannot be with us today. Be with all who are hurting, grieving, or ill, especially those we name before you now, either aloud or silently in our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the membership of this congregation. This week especially, we lift up before you David and Don Communal, and the Andrew Collenberg family, the Robert Kornman family, the Phil Curtolo family, the Alexa Daniel family, the Joseph Dario family, and Sherry Dar. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let us pray for the men and women who serve in our military, especially Brian, Nathan, Cameron, Kyle, Carl, Jonathan, Rachel, Ryan, Michael, Trent, AJ, Craig, and Aaron. Merciful God, receive our prayer. This week we pray for our own congregation of St. Peter's Plainfield and for all who do ministry in this place. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We remember the saints who have gone before us in faith. Trusting in the promise of the resurrection, we find hope in your communion of saints of all times and places. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share signs of peace with one another. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen.
go in peace. You are created to be the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.